We're talking about diatonic triads, and this is one of the more complicated concepts that we're going to be talking about. It's going to take a little while to get through this. I'll attempt to wrap it up in 30 minutes, but I don't know if it's going to work out that way. Diatonic triads are really important to understanding harmonic analysis. If you want to be an improviser or if you want to be a composer, uh, you really need to grasp this concept. Otherwise, you're not going to understand what chords go with what key. So, you know, if you're a writer, you're doing this kind of uh, in the forward direction. You're saying, well, I'm going to write stuff that belongs to the key of whatever. If you're an improviser, chances are you're doing it in the reverse direction where you're looking at a bunch of chords and you're trying to figure out what key they belong to because that's pretty crucial to uh, understanding any kind of improvisation. Otherwise, you're just going to kind of be uh, tackling chords as they come, never really have this bigger picture of what key am I in. So diatonic is a word that means inside the scale, and triads mean three note chords. In other words, we're gonna build all the three note chords that are found inside a scale. We're only gonna concern ourselves with the notes of a scale. And that makes it a little bit easier than if we had to deal with all 12 notes, but it's still kind of complicated. So the first thing we're gonna do is, of course, build the scale. Now, I like to do all these Examples in C, it looks better on paper. You don't have to deal with sharps and flats. Of course, on the guitar, like I'm always telling you, it's not really a whole lot different to do it in C than any other key, at least once you leave the open position. But just for the sake of uh, keeping things straightforward here, we're gonna do this in C. So I'm gonna pick one string. I'm gonna build my C scale. Ah. All right, so there's the C scale. Now I'm going to stack another note on top of each one of these notes so that it's like these scale degrees you see here are going to be the root of their own chord. In order to get the rest of the notes, if this first note here, C, is the root, now I need to put the third above C. That's just the same as the third note of the scale. So I'm gonna take this E and I'm gonna stack it up on top of this C chord. I have to do that again if I want a triad. So not only, not only am I using the third of the chord, but I'm also gonna use the fifth of the chord. So this fifth over here is gonna look like that. Now I have a three note chord, C, E, G. Well, I'll repeat this process for every one of these scale degrees so that we end up with a triad here. It doesn't matter to me that there are other options for stacking a note above D. It could be F sharp. The fifth could be A flat. Those aren't important to me because I'm staying diatonic to C. So I've got a D. If I go up a third from D, that's F. If I go up a fifth, that's A. So the notes D, F, A are my triad here. So let's put an F and an A above it. We're gonna repeat this process all the way through. So I've got an E, third above E is G, and the fifth is B. On the F chord, now we're talking about F, followed by A, followed by C. Do this on G, and I get G, B, D. Over here, it's A, C, and E, B, D, and F. And finally, we'll just go ahead and repeat the C chord. That's C, F, or I'm sorry, C, E, and G. All right, so there's our seven triads in C, we repeated the last one, we didn't need to do that, let's just get rid of it so that we're not confused about that. There are the seven triads in the key of C. Diatonic, meaning nothing outside the key. Well, we need more information. This isn't quite enough here to explain what's going on. We got the right result, but we need to understand what each of these chords are. Some of them are major triads, some of them are minor triads, one of them is even a diminished triad, and we gotta make sense of all that. So this is where we're gonna draw on the information from 
the lesson that I gave you on triad spellings, where we talked about the formulas for building triads, what makes major different from minor, different from diminished, etc. We're going to use that information here to analyze the distances between these notes and determine which one of these is major and which one of them is minor. So coming back to my C chord here, you can look at the piano keyboard and get a good sense of the distances between these notes. I think it's easier to do that on a piano keyboard. And you'll see that the distance from C to E is one, two, three, four half steps or two whole steps. That is also known as a major third. If I would look at the distance between E and G, it's smaller. Why? Because there's no black key between E and F. So whereas this was two whole steps, this one's only a step and a half, or in other words, three half steps. So that is not a major third like this distance was. This interval here between E and G is a minor third. In other words, the formula that comprises this C triad here is major third on the bottom two notes and a minor third between the top two notes. That is the sound that we know as a major triad. In other words, let's write this out here. This distance here from C to E, that's a major triad, a uh, major uh, third, sorry. This distance here from E to G is a minor third. All right, so when we have a triad that's a major third on the bottom, it's a minor third on the top, that's a major triad. In other words, this is a C major chord. When we write the chord symbol, we just write C. By default, if we just write it C, that means it's a major chord. And I'm gonna do the same thing with Roman numerals here, and you'll see why later. That's a Roman numeral one. All right, so let's follow this process now for all the rest of the notes. So look at our piano keyboard when we go from D to F, okay, here's D, here's F. That's a step and a half. Again, we're crossing over this white key, white key spot, right? So this is a minor third down here. F to A, you can see two black keys, right? That's two steps, that's a major third. So look at the difference. It's the opposite of what we saw in the C major chord. This is not a D major chord, it's a D minor chord. Minor on the bottom, major on the top is the formula for a D minor chord. So I'm gonna write D minor. And I'm gonna do the same thing with my Roman numeral. When I write Roman numeral two, I'm gonna add the uh, lowercase m for minor. This analysis over here for the E chord, this interval, we already did it over here, E to G, we just looked at that, that was a minor third. G to B, let's look at the keyboard, here's G, here's B. There's four half steps in there, two whole steps. That's a major third. So the formula is the same as what we just saw on the D minor chord. In other words, this is another minor triad, E minor, Roman numeral three, minor. F to A over here on our four chord, our F chord. We already looked at F to A. It was here, it was two whole steps, it's a major third. A to C, however, if we look down here at our piano keyboard, what happens between A and C? Well, there's another one of these white key, white key spots. So there's only a step and a half there. That's a minor third. So now we're back to the formula we saw over here on C, major on the bottom, minor on the top. That means this is a major triad. So I'm just gonna write F. That's the chord symbol for F major. And when I write my Roman numeral four, I don't need to add anything to it. Roman numeral four is enough to tell us that's an F major. Over here on our G chord, our five chord, we already did G to B. We know that's major. B to D, again, crosses over B to C to C sharp to D, crosses over this white key, white key spot. That's the smaller kind of third. That's a minor third. 
So just like this formula for the F chord, just like this formula for the C chord, this is another major triad. It's G major, Roman numeral five. I just want to point out that anybody who has experience in theory uh, on the classical music side might be used to seeing these Roman numerals for minor triads written out with lowercase letters like this. And that's fine too. If you're used to seeing that, um, that's fine. I kind of tend to think of these things in more of a jazz notation. In jazz notation, you would write in, uh, an uppercase Roman numeral and put the, the small M on it, just like you did in the chord symbol. If you're coming at this from classical, you might be used to seeing the lowercase uh, Roman numerals for minor chords. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing either way. All right, A to C, we looked at that over here. That was minor, minor third from A to C. C to E, we saw that way back at the beginning. That's major. So this is the formula for a minor triad. In other words, A minor or Roman numeral six. Minor in classical notation, it would look like that. Finally, the B chord here, B to D, we looked at right there. That was a minor uh, minor third, and D to F we looked at way back over here. That was another minor third. So I want to point something out here. This is minor third, minor third. It's unique in the series because it's the only one that does that, minor, minor. In other words, it's not a major triad, and it's not a minor triad. This is a diminished triad, and we notate it like that. We do the same thing in our Roman numeral. Or if you're talking about your classical notation, it would look like that. Here is the resulting series. One major, C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished. Now, why do I bother with all this Roman numeral stuff? Well, this is actually more important to write these Roman numerals out. And the reason is this information that you see up here, the Roman numerals, this is the same no matter what key I write. So I could be writing A flat major diatonic triads here. I would get completely different notes. I would get completely different chord symbols. However, I would get the exact same series of Roman numerals. In other words, no matter what set of diatonic triads I write out, they will always follow this pattern. One major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, six minor, seven diminished. Always, absolutely no exceptions. They will follow that series. Well, that's kind of a shortcut if you think about it. If I can spell out a key, you know, if I can just spell out the key of E flat, then without necessarily having to write out all the notes and go through all this analysis, I can already say what chords are going to belong to the key of E flat. As long as I can spell the scale using my whole, whole half formula that we talked about when we went over the major scale, now I can predict all the chords that are going to fit with those seven notes in the key of E flat, and I won't have to labor over writing them out. Well, that doesn't mean you shouldn't know how to write them out. Of course, you need to know how to write the things out. Let's take a look at it. If I just write out this series, one major, two minor, three minor, four major, five major, six minor, seven diminished. Now I can predict pretty easily how this is going to work for any given key. So uh, let, let's pick a different one. Let's, let's pick a hard one. Let's say, um, let's say D flat. <clears throat> I'm going to write a D flat scale. You'll have to trust me on this because I'm not going to notate it. There it 
there's a D flat scale. Now I know, according to my Roman numeral series here, that the two chord in D flat will be E flat minor. Three chord will be F minor, G flat will be major, A flat will be major, B flat will be minor, and C will be diminished. So this saves you a lot of work uh, writing out notes if you just memorize the Roman numeral series. Furthermore, later on, we're going to actually be looking at how to use this for the purposes of analysis, which is enormously important. So we'll be working in sort of the reverse direction. We'll be looking at a group of chords and a progression, and we'll say, based on the chords that you see here, what key are you in? Hopefully you see why that's important uh, as an improviser, because you're going to need to do that all the time, and it's one of the more fundamental aspects of becoming a, a really good improviser. Well, we're going to end it there. I hope that's enough information to be able to clear up why you need this. And um, like I said, you're going to need to be able to use this in a way that is pretty spontaneous. So I encourage you to practice writing out a scale, stacking up the notes to form triads, and then making sure that you really understand why those triads are either major, minor, or diminished. Good luck.